Well, today we get to look at one of the amazing applications of trigonometry. This Christmas, we want to get a Christmas tree in here to put in our classroom. But I have a choice of different heights and I want the biggest one possible. I want to know how high the tree can be. But I can't... I can't reach up there to measure it. So it's like if I needed to measure the height of a tree or something, I'm going to have to use some other technique. Well, I just so happen to have a tape measure with me so I can measure the distance from the floor at the bottom of the corner out to where I'm standing now. I'll do that. That's 2.9 metres from here to the corner. Just write that down so I don't forget. I need to know the angle from here up to the top corner. What measuring instrument would measure an angle or the amount of inclination from here up to that top corner? The amount of inclination, well, that would be a clinometer that would measure that. C-L-I-N-O-M-E-T-E-R. Clinometer. You actually get them on your phone as well, your mobile phone. But I'm going to use one of these old school clinometers. If you look carefully, you can see little angle markings on there. What you do is you point it up to the wherever uh, in line with your eye to wherever you're looking. You press the trigger there. And when it stops moving, you let it go. And that's measured the angle. What I just measured was an angle of 30 degrees to the horizontal. So I'm going to measure from my eye, very important note, from my eye up to that top corner. Very carefully. Squeezing the trigger. When it stops moving, I let it go. And that's the angle I got. What was the angle? 25 degrees. An angle of 25 degrees. I'm just going to write that down so I don't forget. 25 degrees. Now these days, you're right, you can use your mobile phone to measure angles of inclination. You can also use it your mobile phone or some other type of um, laser device to measure distances. But I've used the classic tape measure and a clinometer to do those two measurements. Now I'm going to draw up the situation on the board so you can see what it is that we're trying to work out. So the situation is this. We're trying to measure how high this is here. I'm going to call that H. We want to know that height. And I was able to go out at right angles along the floor for 2.9 metres. Now, here's the trick. I measured from my eyeball up to the top of the corner. <laughs> I didn't lie down on the ground and get the angle from the ground up. I measured it from my eyeball up to the top. Not from the ground up to the top, but from my eyeball up to the top. So I was here somewhere, say that's 2.9 metres, I was here somewhere when I measured the angle up to the top there which was 25 degrees. So when I'm doing my working, sure, that's still 2.9 along there. But this length here isn't going to be the entire height that I'm after. I need to know the height of my eyeball up from the ground. So I'm gonna work, not with a kilometer, I'm going to work that out with the tape measure right now. How high is my eyeball off the ground? Just 
checking that that's nice and taut, and it is 171. Hundred and seventy one centimetres or one point seven one metres. So just in there, that piece there, up to my eyeball is one point seven one metres. Alright, and there's a picture of my eyeball looking up there from there, and that's one point seven five one metres off the ground. Now I've got the information I need to work out the answer to my question. I'm gonna put one more letter on there and pull off a triangle and use it. So instead of H being all the way up here, I wanna know what H is, I'm just gonna call this bit here D. Because then H all the way up will be D plus the 1.71. So let's draw another smaller triangle up, up here, another separate triangle, with the information in it to find D. We know the rules. Step one, label your triangle with opposite adjacent hypotenuse. Hypotenuse, opposite, adjacent, Hypotenuse, nothing to do with it. But step two is to choose the appropriate ratio. So if you've got S O H C A H T O A, we don't want hypotenuse, so we want this ratio here. We're going to work with tan. Step three, write down your equation. So tan of 25 degrees equals, and on the top of any tan, you get the opposite side length. And on the bottom side, you got uh, the bottom of the fraction, you get the adjacent. So that's D on 2.9. And if the pro numeral's on top, you times by the trig stuff. If the pro numeral's on the bottom, you divide by the trig stuff. Well, here the pro numeral is on top. So D is equal to 2.9 times the trig stuff. You need to make sure that your calculator is set in degrees, not in radians. So I just check there's a little D on the top and it's set in degrees. And away I go, 2.9 times 10, 25. And I get 1.352. So I'll call it 1.35. 1.35 metres. Now remember, D was the height from my eyeball basically to the roof. It was this bit here. I need to add on the extra 1.71. So the D plus the 1.71 gives me the height that I need all the way to the top. So H is equal to D, which is 1.35, plus the height up to my eyeball, which is 1.71. So I get, 3.06 metres. So for the Christmas tree, the three metre one should fit. Now, of course, there's other factors, like if you're putting it in some sort of bucket holding system that's got a little bit of height to it, then a three metre one won't fit. But just if I'm, I've got a choice of a, a one metre, a 1.5 metre, a two metre, 2.5, three metres and so on, the 2.5 would be pretty pretty definite fit. Three metres probably will fit here. 3.5 too big. So trigonometry can be used to measure the height of something without actually scrambling your way up there. You can be some distance back. 